Hello, everybody. Turn this up in our headphones, Charles. Ooh. Oh, oh our. <laughs> Our O W W R. That's good, Dylan. Nice. Well, hello, everyone. Yeah. Welcome back to yet another very exciting episode of the Friends Talking Fantasy Podcast. My name is Charles, and with me today, as always, is my lifelong friend and co-host, Dylan. I'm ready to talk some fantasy with my friends, Charles. Yes, we have the honor of saying the plural mm-hmm. friends today because, guys, we have so much Wheel of Time shenanigans to get into with our dear friends and podcasters, Laura and Hannah from On Wednesday's We Read Podcast. Thank you both so much for yeah. coming onto the show. We're super thrilled to have you today. Thanks for having us. We're happy to be here. So, <laughs> of course, of course. So, I guess Hannah, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, tell us more about On Wednesdays We Read podcast. Yes, as Dylan so aptly said, that is our pod. You pronounce mm-hmm. it differently when you <laughs> pronounce the W's. <laughs> but uh, we are two best friends who have not been childhood friends, but friends since college, and we are doing a deep dive into a different book series, one book at a time. And currently we are shitin' on the wheel of time. (laughs) Um, And we are looking at Robert Jordan's uh, wheel of time series. And we are currently on book seven. So this is our first read through, but uh, we go a little bit more intense than you guys. We do one book a month, mostly because Laura and I can only read a, one book together a month. <laughs> so. We can only do so much. Yeah. <laughs> and Wheel of Time, uh, you guys started off pretty big too, because like, is this your first series that you've read for the show also? Yes. Yes. Wow. So you're aiming for the stars and it, it's just... It, I'll just say that I enjoy listening to you guys so much because you do mm-hmm. like reading... Reading Wheel of Time in today's day and age is a fascinating um, experiment to do. And then with the show coming out and all of that. So being able to put these new these new lenses through some of these characters is it's hilarious. And when we thought to do these character mashups with Wheel of Time specifically, it's like we need Laura and Hannah's voice on here right away. Because I feel like you guys were made for this. <laughs> It's definitely interesting looking at things through a 2020 lens mm-hmm. or 2021 yeah. lens. Jeez, um. I'm in the wrong year. <laughs> but reading a book from the 90s. So, yeah. 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 So, I mean, you guys, <laughs> you're doing a great job. You've already passed us in our reading schedule. Dylan's only read through book four. And we've only read through book four on the show or five, right? Have you read four or five? No. Four. Four. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So, yeah. So you've you've passed us. So that's like I guess a quick spoiler warnings thing, right, Dylan? You want to get into that? Oh yeah. Well, I guess we're doing spoilers up through book four. I apologize uh, to Warren <laughs> Hannah for I I can't keep in my head straight what happened in what book. So oh uh, yeah, it's been like yeah, a month we'll or two to... since we've read any Wheel of Time. Yeah, maybe more. So we're a bit rusty, but I've got the Wheel of Time companion encyclopedia here so I can tell the difference mm. between Galen and Galad. I can just look it up real fast. And um, yeah, it'll help yeah. us with what we're getting into. We'll count it. This will be a spoilers episode for Wheel of Time then and just you know do your best to be kind to me i I can take it if something does end up getting spoiled here, but yeah, just. Do your best. Uh, that Charles has read the whole thing. He's, uh, I guess, found a way to manage and not spoil anything. So I have utmost faith, but I, I go in knowing that it's super hard to keep it all straight. So with uh, with that, let's get into these. We have to explain what. Yeah, uh, we'll get into it super, super fast because guys, we have so much fun and shenanigans to get into. I'm going to do this lightning fast. So, this is a wheel of time. Who would win fantasy scenario generator, right? So, we have a long list of wheel of time characters that we all know and love from the series. And then we have about maybe just under 30 of them. And then we have more than that we have about 30 as well different competitions these are things like fist fights races that get as crazy as you know deus de mar or in ownership things like that so we're gonna Mm. randomly generate this is all improv guys we're gonna randomly generate wheel of time characters randomly generate a scenario 
and then we have brought in experts Laura and Hannah to weigh in and help yeah. us speculate on who would win these competitions. So let's not delay any longer. Laura and <laughs> Hannah, are you ready to get into this? Yes, ready. Yeah. How 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 are we <laughs> feeling about the? How are we feeling going into the scenario generator? I think people are going to be are going to be scrutinizing everything we do very very thoroughly. So <laughs> as they, that's a great way to make our guests comfortable, Charles. <laughs> they you will be scrutinized us heavily. <laughs> yeah, we, we scrutinized did. and judged. Mm-hmm. No, our listeners are very kind. <laughs> Please I'm come told. after us on Twitter. That's right. <laughs> and I where can they come you. after you on Twitter again? <laughs> They can come after us at OWWR pod at Twitter and on Instagram. And Laura specifically did the Twitter because she famously is scared of Twitter and won't get on it. So <laughs> that's, it's why a scary it place. It that's why I let Dylan do it. Yeah. Twitter is a scary place. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know it has a bad rap, but I, I found the book community to be extremely welcoming. I was yes. super scared heading onto Twitter uh, alone without Charles to <laughs> aid me or anything. Eventually I got him to make an account. But it's shocking how kind the book community is. I'm sure Hannah can attest to that. I've tried to tell her many times. It does not change her mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, Laura, I had to, so I had to make an account because I had to defend my reputation, my image against Dylan. Dylan was launching all oh. these campaigns like, oh, Charles doesn't do Smear this. Campaign. Charles does this. Oh. Yeah, attacking my character. So oh. he says that he got me to, but really I felt like I had to, to, to clear the narrative out yeah, there. Yeah, defend but your honor. I, I mean. know. It seems like Hannah's a bit kinder to you from what I've seen on Twitter, but, yes, you know. yes. You're not safe. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I I would maybe try to do that to Laura, but I'm also a little bit scared of Laura. So <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. We're all a little bit scared of Laura, I think, but that's okay. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. No, it's it's good to have two other longtime friends here and book enthusiasts, and you know, we like we we've worked together a few times, and we've had watch parties and things. So this has been a long time coming, and we're just super happy to have you on. And it, it, it's fun that this is something that's loose and silly, so that we can just just joke around too. I'm looking forward to that most of all. <laughs> if there's one thing about our podcast, it's very loose and silly. So <laughs> that's yeah. what we love, and yeah, that I mean, we. I remember Dylan sent me a link to your show when you guys had like one episode or two episodes out. And I was like, you guys, you, he's like, you have to listen to this. They're really funny. And I was like, wow, <laughs> it's like exactly what we're trying to do. <laughs> just, just better right out of the gate. So you guys are awesome. <laughs> uh, Laura's mom sent her a text and she said, from listening to you guys, you guys think you're really funny, don't you? And Laura said, yes. So, <laughs> if you don't love your own jokes, I mean, come on. No one's Someone's got that, to, though. right? <laughs> yeah. You got to believe in yourself out there and where no one else will, right? It's exactly. no, I think I'm, I definitely appreciate your willingness to just go in and make fun of a lot of the ways in which this didn't age as well as, uh, <laughs> as we might like, uh, you know, talking about reading series from the nineties and uh, yeah, right away. You can tell you two have awesome rapport and are having fun doing it. And that's what this is all about. So yeah, we're so happy to have you on here. And uh, yeah, Charles, with no further ado. No further ado. Laura, Hannah, we've we've teased the audience long enough. All the listeners are ready for us to begin our Who Would Win Fantasy Scenario Generator colon Wheel of Time edition featuring our pot. (laughs) Are we ready? Get that colon in there. (laughs) We are ready. All right, Dylan, what is our first scenario that we are going to speculate on today? All right, I'll get this generator pumping. Get beep, that boop, generator beep. pumping. What do we have? All right, it's chess. We've got a chess match here. A chess match, hmm. you say? All right. Battle of wits so, and strategy. A battle of wits and strategy. So let's go ahead and generate two characters here. Okay, okay. I, this one might be a little one sided, but on one side, we have Swan Sanche herself. <laughs> and then on the other side, we have Barrelane. <laughs> 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 I mean, Swan's just going to destroy Barrelane, right? Is is that even up for contention? I mean, Barrelane might throw the chess at Swan once she starts losing. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. You would know exactly what steps Barrelane was going to, or what moves she was going to make because she's completely transparent. (laughs) Yeah. 
Yeah. She's pretty obvious with her advances on Rand. So I would not, uh, I would not expect her to have a lot of subtlety. I mean, Swan, no. and I feel like Swan's whole thing is this playing the long game and yes. trying to figure out strategies. Literally, I don't know if there's any character that I would pick, I would pick to beat Swan in this. I mean, there's like Matt, match. who is good Moraine. at things. Moraine, yeah. Um, yeah. Ryan is just good at everything. So you got to always throw him in the mix. But He's yeah, not great at everything. Let's be, let's be fair. <laughs> Being very kind. Yeah, well, I, I'm sure he would be great. It, Robert Jordan would write how good he is at chess. You know, he, he's like, he'd be like, "Oh, how does this piece move?" It's like, "Oh, I win." Oh, okay. Yeah, basically. Yes, yeah, Swan is not known for her subtlety either, but I think she would just relish in destroying Barreline. I think you get to the point mm-hmm. where it's like it shows the progress mm-hmm. of the board, and then like all of Barreline's pieces just slowly fade off the board and Swan has yeah. all her pieces and then Berlin will get all pouty as we know. So yeah. that's how I picture this going. Yeah. She doesn't like to lose. So yes, she would get very upset. Mm. She would, get she would also upset. get annoyed by how much Swan brought up fish because that is also Swan's <laughs> like entire personality. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. She's like, Oh, you play like a minnow in a pond of grouper. <laughs> Something <I don't> know. <laughs> But yeah, that's what that's Nailed what she it. would do, and she would just relish in destroying her as well. She, you know, she would have no mm-hmm. problems just winning. But it sounds like the whole group is in agreement. Our first ever uh, generator, and it's by unanimous vote that Swan Sanche, if I say that correctly, will defeat Berylane in chess. There we go. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get let's the next keep it rolling. one going. We can let's do better than that rolling. one. I think that's too one sided. That was a good get one. pumping. It was, yeah. You know, get those brain muscles going. Get and, those brain uh, muscles going. <laughs> beep, boop, beep. Oh, okay. We've got who would be the best Twitter user? I'm, oh. I'm guessing, Hannah, you probably <laughs> added this. I, 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 think. I did add that. I think it takes a certain skill to be a good Twitter user. So I was okay. interested. Wow. And we've got a dynamic dynamic duo here for this twitter poll on one end we have the man himself lan and then on the other side we Mm. have the one that he's uh sworn to protect and that is moraine lan and moraine together competing for followers over on the twitter sphere (laughs) (laughs) i think we have to figure out what makes someone a good twitter user by the way is it is followers what you're measuring I'm just by? Because say I think land would be too twer- boring i would not want to read this content well like the, be like, my favorite color is and i told that to nynaeve in secret <laughs> <laughs> he drops some poetic stuff though sometimes charles was tweeting out some land quotes and <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was definitely getting a good reaction when he was doing that, I think. Right, Charles? Yeah, and there's something else that we have to consider, trusted panel, and that is that you can upload pictures. I imagine Lan is is quite a hottie, and when he <laughs> uploads pictures of his body, he's just going to be rolling in the followers and the likes. He doesn't have to like be writing stuff all the time, engaging with people. He'll just be like, oh, here's a video of me at sword practice today. And then he's going to be like, oh, I've got hundreds of followers now. <laughs> That's something to consider. <laughs> I'm going to go with Moraine, though, because she's going to be posting really cryptic things. And you're mm. like, what does that mean? Mm. I have to keep following to find out. And will, the, I, yeah. will people like Moraine, though? Is she likable? Oh, That's yeah, it. definitely. <laughs> that Laura's just means Laura likes more. <laughs> also, to people followed her without questioning. That's true. I also yeah, wonder... they literally follow her right in the first book. Right for, with her doing not much to actually I mean, be. She was kind of come with me, and they're like, no, "We she's, will." She's kind of intimidating. She was flashing money around. She was throwing lightning bolts. And when that person says I mean, follow you, you're like, probably okay. do that for Twitter followers as well. Yeah. I don't lightning know. emojis. That's true. Yeah. I also feel like with like, is Lan the type of person to post a thirst trap? Because what you described is definitely a thirst trap. <laughs> He'll need a manager like, for sure. He'll need yeah. a manager. <laughs> like, probably Moraine. Right. Moraine's managing him. So I and feel like Moraine's she... not going to let him get more followers than her. No. <laughs> right. So I no, think. You know what's funny? I, I think um, Nynaeve would probably be Land's manager. And then, oh. oh, then that's a battle you have to look out for because you have Nynaeve managing Land's Twitter account competing with Moraine's Twitter account. That's going to get ugly. There's going to be some blood the in the post water. Would on be that like, one. 
Maureen's account is awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go unfollow her. And- Everything she says is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, though, too, Nynaeve would not let Lan use your strategy there, Charles. She would get terribly jealous if he was posting oh. all those, like, shirtless videos <laughs> of him training. So that takes away his greatest asset if Nynaeve is in charge. But then again, would she post it if it meant beating Moraine at this competition? Mm. Because she hates Moraine she enough. She would do anything to beat Moraine. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, I can mm. see her begrudgingly doing that. And I can already picture the weird, like, sexual writing in the book describing these scenes as well, too. It would be like, take your shirt off, Land, and start, like, go sword practice right now. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, I guess. I don't know why you're asking me to do this. And then, uh, yeah, she's just managed. She's pulling all the strings in the background. But is it enough to beat Moraine? That's the question here. I, I feel like Moraine is one of the powerhouses of this whole series. It's tough. It's tough. Maureen cannot be beaten. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you, Laura. I don't think that. I think Maureen is probably the most popular character. Maybe Matt. But either way, I feel like, she, and she's the face of this show as well. So you just think of, she's getting tagged probably in all those Wheel of Time oh, on Prime yeah. trailers all the and press. stuff. You know, yeah. that's true. Amazon's going to like use her as their flagship account. You know, they're going to start working yeah. her into all kinds of stuff. That's true. Retweeting all her stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's I think big. I got to go Moraine. Yeah. All right, Hannah, where's your vote going? I think you convinced me with the whole Wheel of Time, Moraine being like the center focused character because I was really pulling for the land slash Nynaeve competition aspect Mm. but you're right Maureen's the front and center of the show so well I agree that Maureen would win but I'm still gonna vote for Lan anyway just so that's on the record (laughs) (laughs) you know but (laughs) girls has taken some heat about his (laughs) land takes (laughs) yeah (laughs) but yeah so all right well that was a close one guys that was an interesting matchup but Maureen would win as the better Twitter user and that's all there is to say about that. That was a good deliberation. I'm glad we brought in the whole panel for that one. So, Dylan, let's go ahead and generate another scenario here. What do we got? All right. Beep, boop, beep. Beep, boop. Let's get this rolling. We've got a marathon. A marathon? A marathon. Okay. Interesting. Long distance running. You need endurance, stamina. And who is that going to be? All right. Well, we've got two people here. I think this is going to be a little bit one-sided, but you never know. On on one hand, you know, he's not known for his speed or his hastiness, but that might help him out oh, in no. an endurance run, and that is loyal. And then on the other end, we have people who are known for their endurance and stamina and run for a long time. I'm talking about Avienda of the Tardad Aiel. So this is... Uh, mm. it, this is tough. <laughs> I want to give it to Avienda. Right leaning out of the way. one way. doesn't ride a horse. Yeah. The rest of the people do. But so. I don't think Avienda rides horses either. It doesn't, don't they she all? Does. Do? Oh, they do. Ah, well, see. she does sometimes, but she mostly runs because Aiel people don't yeah, like using horses. They don't horses. like horses. Isn't it like so, canon that they run everywhere for like long yeah, distances? Yeah. <laughs> But it's also canon that Loyal runs really well yeah. because he always mm. says that he doesn't like using the horse he has mm-hmm. because he can run just as fast as a horse. Mm. So mm. this might either be the worst matchup or a perfect matchup of people. I think it's going to be mm. close because it's like you said, if it was just another human, any sort of Aiel would mm-hmm. have the advantage because it's canon that they can run faster than humans should be able to run and run further as well, long distances. But Loyal's not a human. He's an Ogier, as we all know, right. from Steading Shentai. So that comes with it, all these other abilities that even though he's so not known for running. So if his mother was standing somewhere, he would run faster <laughs> to get away yes. from her. Yeah. yeah. So that would up the speed. That would up the speed. But... It does... Yeah, is where he, is she though? Is she at the end of the marathon? Because then he might not even be willing to participate. Is she at the start? It pretty much might just yes. depend on what direction is his mother his is. Book? Yeah. Is there a noble That's cause too. that he's motivated to participate in? Also, is he too much of a gentleman to be Avienda? Because Loyal is very mm. gentlemanly and very like he mm. caters to people. Mm. But I could picture so, Avienda being like, don't go easy on me, Loyal. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> And she would like, oh, not my. hesitate to scream at him. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Like, I know you can run faster than that, loyal. You like, I want to win. Like, honestly, I want to compete 
and it'd be like, oh my. <laughs> Could Loyal really stay focused on the idea of beating someone else in a race? Really? <laughs> like, do we have any faith he yes. wouldn't just stop at one of the, like, he'd probably pass the first in, the second in, the third in, the, then the fourth in comes around. He's like, I could stop there, sit in a room and write my book. Why am I mm. being so hasty and trying to get to the end of this race? I, I I think he might be faster. He might have the endurance, but I don't know if he has the motivation or drive to make this happen. While well, Avienda, I would never doubt that. I agree with that take that mm. that makes sense to me loyal would definitely stop halfway through and be like this is stupid why are we doing this <laughs> he does not have the heart of a competitor that's for sure whereas avienda absolutely does but he does he can get coerced into pretty much anything so i feel like yeah. if I, avienda was yelling at him enough berating him enough to try his best i think he would uh, and I don't think Loyal would cheat necessarily, but there's also the use of steadings and way gates and things like that, that, you know, for marathons, he could potentially... He wouldn't do that. <laughs> he wouldn't do that, maybe, but it's an option we can't overlook, guys. Also, would it help him write his novel? Because he is trying to write a novel and he wants to be in be on the action. So mm, I could mm. write about marathons in my book. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's absolutely true. Man, this is tough. I, I think we, I think, have we made every point? Is it time to deliberate? Is it time to cast our votes? I think so. All There's right. four of us. This Laura, is, uh, Laura, Hannah, <laughs> this we, is we want to do the honors work. of casting the first vote. Uh, this is very difficult. I'll way. cast my vote. Loyal yeah. All the way. Uh, Loyal Avienda. from Laura, Avienda from Dylan. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Already we right are <laughs> shocking. No this one. Is, yeah. <laughs> Team loyal. We're gonna keep it civil here. We're gonna keep it civil. Oh god. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I'll go next, and then Hannah, you can be the split as the, as okay. the guest. Wow. Uh, so, or you could tie it all up. I think when every, when push comes to shove, I gotta go air on the side of Canon, Avienda, the Aiel. It is canon wow. that they run long distances and don't break a sweat. So even though I think it would be a close race, I got to go with Avienda. That's my vote. Wow. I'm very sorry to do this to you, Laura, but I also worst have betrayal. to pick Avienda. <laughs> yes, oh, this is the worst wow. betrayal I've ever done. <laughs> There's a rift in the Our Pod community, guys. There's a rift coming. Ugh. But it's a good one. It's worth if this was going to split up the split up our party. Yeah, at least it was something worthy. At the least controversy it was over oh, yeah. who would win a marathon or Avienda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the biggest fight of our friendship, Laura. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're yeah. sorry, listeners. This is the end of our pod. Oh wow! <laughs> wow! Breaking news. And, yeah, like I was saying, if there's ever been a reason to break up a best friendship, it's over who would win. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're yeah, looking so. forward to your solo yeah. careers going forward. <laughs> so, Dylan, we due to a unanimous. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't unanimous. That's not what unanimous it, is. It, due to majority vote, we have Avi end up mm -hmm. beating Loyal in a race, but you know, it was a close one. It was a close one. So. Let's get another uh, scenario generated here. Let's see. What do we have, Dylan? Beep, boop, beep. Babysitter? Someone put baby. Babysitter. Who, like, who's a better babysitter? I put this you, because I thought it would be fun. <laughs> I, it's interesting. Uh, Y'all added all sorts of competitions. Charles and I never thought of. <laughs> yeah, this was a great. Babysitting. Yeah, this was this one's new to me as well, but I love it, and I am already laughing looking at the names that we have generated for ourselves. So, right. um, so the first one that we have here is one that's near and dear to all of our hearts, and that is Perrin. And then mm -hmm. we have our other character, a bit more of an obscure cast member that I snuck onto the list just because I think he's an underrated character. And that is Hirin the Sniffer. So we have Perrin <laughs> versus Hirin for who would be the better babysitter. Let the deliberation begin. <laughs> I, I mean, the baby would never have like a dirty diaper with Hirin. Like <laughs> he would sniff that yeah. right out. So the baby That's... would disappear quickly if Hirin was the <laughs> babysitter. But Hirin would, but Hirin would be able to sniff the baby out. You know, the baby would never really be lost. The baby would never really so, be lost. I'm so sorry. There's going to be a plane going by. It's the Air and Water Show in Chicago today. So we have like, oh. or like we have the Blue Angels that have just been ripping oh. through my neighborhood. So 
Yes, very it's cool. been very loud. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No worries. I don't have a lot of urine takes. If I'm going to be honest, I he can smell really good. That's just about I, all yeah. I, <laughs> that that much I knew. <laughs> but so can Perrin. I mean, Perrin was the true. substitute sniffer. That's true. So... I can yeah. just picture Perrin being like, I don't really want to babysit this kid, but I will. He and would do it out of duty. He would do it out of duty. That's right. It's like, oh, well, the parents are going to be gone for the evening. They just want to have a nice time out. You know, they don't oh, really to get to go to away. Yeah. Like the, they haven't been out to the movie since the kid was born. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll help them out now. And then they'll, you know, stay up all night. He like won't watch TV. He'll just be very focused on raising the kid. I'm getting all those vibes from from Perrin. Perrin is definitely not yeah. a fun babysitter. Like he's no. not the one no. you the want. The kid your would be to look, like the baby would be looking at Perrin, being like, "What do I do with this guy?" And then Perrin would You'd be want like, "Want your parents to call Matt." but they yeah <laughs> i feel like they'd be a little nervous calling that it's like you know he's you great with the to, kids yeah. but they, i don't know how respectful the they love him parents. yeah yeah they love maybe Matt, both, but maybe he both took them Matt gambling last together time. would be like they should start like a babysitter's club you know matt and parents babysitter's club <laughs> matt would take them gambling and then forget he was babysitting and just like <laughs> go home right. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, but the kids had a great time, and yeah. that's what matters. Yeah, the kids love Uncle Matt. You know, Uncle Matt's the coolest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think Perrin, it sounds like he has at least enough uh, sense of smell uh, that you would need in order to babysit, to meet the, like, <laughs> I, I think he'd be able to smell the dirty diaper. That's I think right. he'd have that covered. And he has, I think Perrin has a sort of, beneath that exterior this nurturing side to him mm. and i think he would be able to show that if he had a, a child that he needed to take care of so i i think he just has more personality and more things <laughs> going for him than you're in the sniffer how and could you say that dylan <laughs> I, I it's been a while since we've read these books i'm like Sure. Like, can we think of anything about him besides that he has a good sense of smell? And it sounds like no. So I have to go pair and I'm just going to put that out there. Throwing Definitely I'm going to vote Perrin as well. I also think if he liked the kid enough, because he would like come around on the kid and never admit it. Mm -hmm. And then he yeah. would bring a wolf to visit the child and be like, it's not going to hurt you. Look, you get to see a wolf. Like that's a, <laughs> that's a cool thing for a babysitter to do. Mm. Yeah. You could, like animals. the kid can like ride on the back of the wolf, you know, they race around. That'd be fun. If we've got visitors coming, then that raises the question is Fael in the mix. Oh no, mm. no. But it would be like, okay, you're spending more good. time with the kids than me. Why do you always agree to these babysitting jobs? You should be running the country. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, but they asked me to, and they're my friends. And it's like, well, you have a whole nation now, and me too. <laughs> I, can say. I mean, that's the exact conversation yeah, they would my... have. <laughs> like... Basically. It's like, you're a king now. You shouldn't be babysitting. <laughs> have here and do it. <laughs> she would push it off on someone else and then she would like just glare at him the entire time so i don't think you can bring fail or as we call but her on I the podcast Perrin, fufu yeah yeah i love that i love fufu i don't think i think Perrin would actually welcome the vacation like the break from fufu it's like he almost accepts the gig just so he can have some peace and quiet for a night for an Probably evening accepts immediately <laughs> yeah <laughs> i need a night away yeah exactly uh, so so hannah that means you're going Perrin then right Yes. All right. So, Laura, where are we at? Definitely the... Perrin. Yeah. I mean, I almost kind of regret putting here in the mix at all, but I just don't want people to forget <laughs> that he's a cast member in the show. So let's Never just all forget. let's all acknowledge that Heron is real and he's out there and he's the sniffer. <laughs> but yeah, I'm Perrin. Obviously, it's hard to compete with one of the like, the core cast members in anything. So it's a rough gig. Maybe Heron could have beat someone like the dark lord or something but that's not how the chips fell in the random scenario generator wheel of time edition so it is what it is yeah all right well that was an exciting one uh, it's decided perrin wins the babysitting competition against Huron. so let's generate that next contest dylan what do we have Beep, boop, beep. We've got dancing. Is this like a yes. dance off? Is Ooh. that what we're thinking of? Yes. Yeah. So do we pick one each or do we do couples? 
Ooh, Ooh couples, couples could be fun. Because yeah. it's like salsa dancing. Yeah. Yes, okay. Well, they do that. that. That's like a. Oh, sorry. You got more. <laughs> I said this is dancing with the stars style. Yeah. Dancing <laughs> with the stars. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. So we're the judges panel on Dancing with the Stars Wheel of Time edition, and here are our two dancing couples. Uh, so the first one. Wow. Okay. So we have is Elida. Matt in it? Maybe. Mm. Uh, so on the first round, we have Elida and Rand. And that's the first oh. couple, and then the second couple. I swear this was random. Tom and Matt. <laughs> oh, Tom wow. and Matt all the way. Tom would Tom be like Matt all the way. I <laughs> lose, boy. Matt is an experienced dancer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, first of all, Tom and Matt all the way, and I just pictured Tom being like, "Follow my lead, boy." <laughs> We're dancing the waltz. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not being like Matt's I'm tired of always following your well. bloody lead. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah no i think you know matt definitely would rather be dancing with one of the women i think but that being said him and tom they would have moves together right Dynamic like those two they're yeah. a great couple like yeah both, they're just both them. i'm a big yeah. fan yeah that's yeah. so fun yeah and i mean just imagine trying to have like someone from the white tower dancing with rand it's Especially Elida. Yeah, yeah Elida's especially not gonna... Elida. Ugh. She would be a very robotic dancer. Yeah. yeah, and then Rand the whole time would be like, oh, why? Like, <laughs> I'm just a shepherd from the two rivers. I'm not a dancer. <laughs> and, and with Should one be. of the... Just one blushing. from the White Tower, too. Yeah, like, you know. He's, he's <laughs> also be crying over how much you wished it were Perrin and Matt dancing with her instead of him. Yeah, so. oh, how, how much be better so dancers much better. they are. They're so much yeah. better at dancing. <laughs> They're just yeah. so much better. They're so much better with women all around. So. Yeah. Yeah, and if I can just imagine there's like, you know, a trophy and a cash prize and Matt being all over there, like, we got to get that prize. <laughs> it's like, I'll just get the score and then I'll use that to buy my way out of here. So, And Tom's yeah. the only one who could make Matt be the person who, like, Tom would be like, no, I'm leading. And Matt would <laughs> groan, but he'd do it because it's Tom. So. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. And with it's someone possible. to kind of, you know, kind of wield him in and harness that energy without it just taking over and being crazy. That's a huge plus. <laughs> I mean, Tom and Matt, well, like you said, what a dynamic duo. Like, that's just a, mm. you know, sometimes the Wheel of Tide generator taketh away, but this time it, it gave it really well with the <laughs> Tom and, and Matt. <laughs> it's like someone had to say that, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so I think it's unanimous here, Tom and Matt, all the way in the Dancing yep. with the Stars competition. So, uh, Dylan, I almost called you Matt there. <laughs> Go ahead and oh, generate God. a uh, generate another <laughs> contest for us. <laughs> that was the character I got in the Wheel of Time personality quiz. For that it was. Whatever that's worth. <laughs> yep. All right. Beep, boop, beep. We've got a game of cards. It's too Ooh. bad Matt's not involved in this one. Right. But well, we picked three be. people. I'm not removing oh, you duplicates didn't? for this okay. one because I don't mind if people pop Get rid of Kieran, game. though. <laughs> <Remove him. laughs> um, that's fair but what if like a sniffing contest oh and of course he comes the, 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 i swear the names i picked up were matt perrin and Hiran for the three like no. i'm not even lying no. dude no <laughs> I'll, I'll pick another single so it's matt and perrin and then i'll just generate one more here who do we have Oh, Matt came up again. So Matt, you're Matt is beating the odds. Can What's going on with the generator? St statistically significant here, uh, but we have the dark one. So it's Matt, his luck. Matt, Perrin, and the dark one playing a game of cards. <laughs> <laughs> I think the dark one is not as good at strategy or tactics as we might want to <laughs> believe for a big bad. But maybe further along in the series, something will happen. So he is very intimidating, here. though. I know. Right, would, but Matt doesn't care. I feel like, I don't, is this like a dream sequence where they see the Dark One or is like the Dark One getting out of prison has all of his powers? Like, That's what's a good the question. scenario? I just picture them like waiting for, you know, the, the Dark One to like fold or whatever. And there's just like a million rats that are getting killed in the background. They're like, what is this? It's bizarre. Mm, <laughs> I don't mirrors know. everywhere. Mirrors yeah. everywhere. It's, it's like I win again. It's like, well, no, you don't. You know, like <laughs> the hand's not over. <laughs> we have to actually play. Yeah. <laughs> Just say I win. Yeah. That's Keeps a good question. Asking, 
he keeps asking the boys their names like tell me your name yeah. that was his personality for a while yes exactly <laughs> yeah. he's like i have all these powers but actually finding you is impossible so that's a good question i i don't know i think we i think he must just like you know magic powers his way into the game some sort of bizarro dream sequence that's how i would see it i feel like that's the only way you can bring the dark one into the narrative honestly yeah <laughs> in that case he would probably manipulate it so that he would win yeah or mm -hmm. like you know the cards would come to life and try to attack right. them all and stuff like that you know that that's been known to happen or all the cards are just the boys' faces on it. Like it's just going to be like something mm. weird like that. Like mm. parents sitting next to a wolf. And let's be honest, the dark one would cheat. He would. He's the dark but one. But yeah. <laughs> does Matt's luck overpower the dark one's ability yeah. to cheat? That's the only yeah. thing. Matt yeah. is extremely lucky. He's got these divine forces for like this divine powers about him that he always wins. He's very lucky. Is that enough to outweigh the Dark One's influence, though? That's the decision that we have to make here. Because Perrin's obviously losing. <laughs> <laughs> See, I feel like there are actual Wheel of Time super fans that could give us some, like, that's how deep the world building and the lore and all this stuff goes. And people reread this series over and over and over again. You know, you find all these people on that on the awesome community that's uh, Twitter of time talking about, oh, I'm on my eighth read of this 14 book series. I feel like someone like that could give us some sort of canon answer between the Dark One's powers and Matt's luck. But uh, yeah, that's yeah, uh, right first. How could you not figure this uh, out? <laughs> <laughs> well, like... yeah, tweet at us. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, tell at us who would win pod, this one. At the FTF Podcast 1, reach out, weigh in on the speculations, guys. It's heavily contested, but we're going to have to go in blind on this one and just lay down our votes. Who would like to cast the vote first? Who's going to do it? I'll go Matt. I think I'm going to go Matt, too. Mm. Gotta go Matt. He's got the experience. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. when in doubt, go with Cannon, and Matt's a known card player, so gotta go Matt. That's it. But I could see a, a bizarro universe where the Dark One cheats and is winning the whole time. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. But Sorry, Perrin. Sorry. Yeah, Perrin loses. <laughs> we didn't even time. mention him because everyone we just discounted you, him immediately. We still love you. <laughs> Perrin is still yeah. Laura's favorite, but nice. he just, mm -hmm. no, it wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Let's do another one, Dylan. This is um, getting uh, very exciting now. Let's see what other contests we have in the generator. All right. Oh. <laughs> beep, boop, beep. We've got book writing. <laughs> oh, who's going who to write, a better, write book? a better book? That is a great Even one. if Loyal comes up, I'm going to pick someone else. <laughs> 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 there's no there's no evidence that loyal is actually writing a good book uh, oh come right. on that's just being biased again but also <laughs> this is loyal but, slander right here the highest form <laughs> also we've like espoused on our podcast like is the wheel of time series just loyal's book like is that yeah, what robert jordan's doing like, i mm. would title this the wheel we, of time we did say we yeah. hoped loyal would write women better but uh maybe he did it mm. maybe he wrote this book series so. yeah maybe the epilogue is like and so dear reader I hope you enjoyed my story, Loyal the Ogier. <laughs> right. It could, it's certainly be not hasty. It, it took <laughs> a lot true. of words and he <laughs> took his time. So it would definitely be in character of Loyal to have written this 14 book series. Yeah. So, he could have taken it easy anyway. in prologues, but. <laughs> oh, God. That's very true. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to throw this out there. I don't think Robert Jordan knows what a prologue is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small book. <laughs> he, he broke new ground with the fantasy community on what a prologue can be, guys. That's how we <laughs> prefer to explain it. <laughs> that, I do like the first prologue of book one. That's a good one. That's... That one is excellent. Yeah. Small spoiler for you. We are now on book seven and the prologues take like three hours on the audiobook, and you don't know why. <laughs> They're oh. a book within a book. Yeah. Mm. Yes, That's well, something. It wouldn't be a Wheel of Time, you know, story without it at this point, though, I don't think. But Dylan has a lot to experience still with the series. <laughs> we'll get back Definitely. to it at some point. But yeah. for now, we have to, <laughs> I haven't even told you I'm staring at the names right here and, and I haven't shared them with the panel yet. So We've got two characters here, and they're both pretty big names in the Wheel of Time lore here, but neither one of them is an Ogier, so we don't have to worry about this 
this like anti ogier narrative that Dylan's been trying to push right. here. But instead That doesn't we sound have, like me. <laughs> instead we have Egwene, who we all know and love. Mm. And then returning wow. to the arena, he's already lost once in the Twitter sphere, but can he pull it out as an author? And that is Lan himself. Egwene v Lan, who's selling more copies? Egwene. Mm. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> It's Land interesting you went like with a... who's selling more copies, Charles. <laughs> what about the creative process? I what mean, I feel like if you succeed in the creative process, you're going to succeed in, in sales. The they're answer both... to that question is also Egwene. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <indeed>. <laughs> but, again, know... what if he wrote poetry? Because That's again, exactly we said Land can be poetic. Say, Anna, he was going to write a very small thing, like leaves of grass, but like, you know, swords and mountains you know that's what he would call his his little book and people would go crazy over it i think <laughs> hmm i think it's Egwene's determination hmm. it's uh what kind of book is Egwene writing he could though? that's well, the thing i think she'd go full sanderson mode though like she just crank out tons of books and she's gonna get better she works hard at her craft and i think that uh, lan does, does he have does he have the motivation to really <laughs> get those books out? As, you know, I mean, he's going to do we... one and it's going to be big. You know, that's the thing. He's not going to be like R.L. Stein <laughs> writing a bunch of goosebumps. Will anyone there. but Nynaeve buy the book? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. He'll be like a uh, cult. He'll have like a cult following of people. Well, again, if Nynaeve wants his books to sell and she's also the manager of his Twitter, Which we she could know. really push that book. She could be, mm. you know, like Harriet McDougal, you know, Robert Jordan's wife and editor. You got the, you got the Lan uh, naive power combo too. You know, it could be that case. But mm. I mean, Egwene is such a wonder kid. You know, it's hard to imagine that she's not going to be able to succeed in, in in writing books. But oh god, this is so close. But I think Lan is going to write a very thin book of musings that people are going to enjoy, and I'm casting mm. my vote for Lan. Like a philosophy mm. book. And that's... Okay. I'll give it to you. You're going to give... Go you're Lan. not going to vote a Gwaine? No. Wow. I, I just... I don't know. I'm actually thinking about it. I don't know if Gwaine... Because it is like, what would she write? I kind of like this idea of of the land poetry honestly from the jump start i'm like a queen would totally write romance like that's yes, the type of she author would, she would yes. be mm. that's well said that's because i was trying to figure out what she would write and it would totally be romance it, it's she's sure. a romance novel but like i'm those sorry sell, those move off those fly. they, they well, sell but yeah. knowing how a queen treats romance they would be terrible novels <laughs> such mm. great books to discuss <laughs> hannah we would read them <laughs> <laughs> no, she would she would do like the three dollar Walmart novels that are like white cover that my a mom shirtless read. Shirtless galad on the cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if it's so selling copies. copies, Charles. Yeah, if it's selling copies, I don't know. Lands might be more. I guess I don't want to say dense per se, but not as accessible. He'd be like a just these author's more author. Musings. You know, his people would be yeah. like, "Wow, this guy's so." deep you know whereas the right. is but i also feel like yes she'd write romance novels but i think people would read them and read the scenes and be like has it, 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 does she know what she's talking about <laughs> I, I think she'd be a little it would be a little confusing to read what, what she has to say in her in her romance yeah. novels for sure I think they'd be hilarious. Yeah. I, I'd be a customer, but I still think Lan is going to be the best. <laughs> I could not imagine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Lan would be the better book writer. Like, I don't think a queen would be good at book writing. She might be successful, mm. but that's mm. two different things. All right. So we'll go with better book writer then. I think that's where we're naturally okay. leaning towards. Yeah. And I think we've got three lands. Laura, I don't know if you've officially cast your vote yet. You know, I think I'll just stick with Egwene just to be different. I respect that. I respect that. Yeah. And the, and Egwene romance novel. I mean, that's a fantastic premise right there. I'm getting total Bridgerton vibes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that would be so uh. good. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I think we've got time for at least one more here, Dylan. Let's throw that into the generator and see what we got. 
All right, beep, boop, beep. We've got a drinking contest here. Who can drink the other person under the table? All right, let's see who we got here. I'm going to get two people going. Okay, we've got Moraine and Leandrin as our drinking competition competitors. So, man, I mean, Moraine, very composed individual. Hard to see her go down in anything. But is there any canon Leandrin of her? Would cheat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I feel like Moraine would be on to her antics and, like, and, you know, predict it and then foil her cheating attempts That's true. and leave her exposed and vulnerable, you know? True. But also, would Maureen be someone who can handle her alcohol? Because she doesn't That's, seem like she's a drinker. Know. Yeah. she's. I don't think mm-hmm. there's any canon that I can remember of her. Like, the only person we really have canon of, I, I just go back to all those um, Elaine moments. <laughs> yeah. No, that wasn't exactly painting a positive picture. No, of her winning a her, drinking contest. Yeah, of those she would scenes lose instantly. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but those are scenes that Dylan and I've talked about quite a bit, and we enjoy. Yeah. Um, that was when we talked about Sandra and the uh, right, right, Sandra right. Gibbons on, on the book four discussion. Yep. That was the last episode we did. <laughs> Way Is back. That the last episode we did on Wheel of Time. <laughs> In a while. <laughs> yes. we're back well we're back guys with our pod speculating on who would win this drinking contest but my vote's for Moraine I don't want more I don't want Moraine I, yeah I, I mean I'm just like Leandrin, why is Leandrin, Leandrin even Leandrin in this why yeah 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 I'm gonna go Moraine let's do Moraine all right that's decided now we're close to the end, but I'm thinking like you guys come up with some great competitions. What if we, instead of leaving it to chance, let's pick a competition. Is there any one that we were hoping we'd get and then we'll rap randomly battle. generate the characters? Rap battle? Anyone else? We hear rap battle. Anyone else? All right, let's do it. So should we pick two people? Like I've always pictured it to be like eight mile style where they're like underground on the stage, you know, exchanging the microphone. That's how I picture it. So Let's do two for a rap battle here. Oh, okay. This is interesting. So on one end, I have, I mean, Dylan's going to try and slander him as much as possible. So our pod, it's Mm. our job to make sure he gets a good representation. And that's Loyal. Loyal entering the rap battle. And then... It's coming up a lot. Against Loyal, we have Min. Loyal v. Min in a rap battle for the ages. Hmm. This is a tough one. I'm going to betray Loyal and say that I think <laughs> Min would win just because he is so slow and she would know what he's going to say. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, Min's, cadence. Min's very, like, she sees people's auras. She, she sees the future. Like, her raps would be interesting. Yeah, for, they could be prophetic, even. It'd be great. Right. And here's the thing, a rap battle, if you're saying it's eight mile style, Charles, then that means that they are taking shots at each other. It's <laughs> dissing and things like that. Yeah. And I feel like Min would be down to bring it for a rap battle like that. She would see Loyal for exactly who he is. Well and said. Right, much like I do. And he... <laughs> <laughs> and then she would be able to absolutely roast him with that information. And even if... Uh, even if Loyal could come up with good disses and stuff to go after Min, I don't feel like he has the gall to actually bring it like that. Mm. So he doesn't have I, it. In him. I just, yeah, I just oh. don't see. Uh, and it's freestyle. Yeah, I feel like right? Min would just say freestyle? something. Freestyle. It's, yeah, not it's freestyle. Uh, Min would just say something super devastating, and Loyal would just be like, oh my. <laughs> 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 and, and, and furrow his eyebrows and then the crowd would just boo him off the stage <laughs> but also like what what do you have to scream at loyal that he's so bad about that would devastate him because he's like, a pretty mother. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're running away from your mom, mom you're running away from your girls when's that book coming out yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when's the book I'm coming out this Okay, well, fair enough. <laughs> the fact that he's really slow, or maybe the fact that he's fast for an O-gear, like the fact that he's too slow to interact with people outside the setting, but too fast to 
uh, like re- act with his own peers. There's a lot of material you could use to skewer. Charles, core. you're more savage than me. <laughs> hey, you know, when it comes to a rap battle, I'm going to bring it. All right, I'm not going to just <laughs> let things that go unsaid really here. <laughs> that's the whole. Yeah. That's the whole stakes of a rap battle. You got to just, you know, it's raw and it's uh, scathing. So I feel like Dylan, you said it best. Men's going to see you into his aura and hold nothing back and eviscerating him whereas loyal's got the personality opposite of what you'd want <laughs> for a rap battle to be able to improvise and be mean and things like that he just it doesn't have it in him oh, well that yeah. i think the vote is are we all decided i mean min for the win min. Right? That's, yeah. that's decided so yeah. that sorry, one's loyal. in the book sorry loyal again <laughs> like you she's not bringing it today but that's okay um does, is there I any other charles started you start that as a, we'd have to defend loyal against me and then you froze to him so bad i feel bad for loyal also i want to say every time laura votes against loyal there's like pain in your eyes like you're so i've been holding you have tears. to do it <laughs> well hey you know that's like the burden the that we have to high. bear as the judges here today on this yeah. panel it's like we're gonna break a few hearts we're gonna cause a few tears to even flow. our own even our own and <laughs> especially our own you know it's a selfless task coming on here and and weighing in on these on these speculations we're doing we, it for you listeners yeah, yeah. <laughs> exact well said laura we do it for are you. we heroes who's to say maybe yes. who knows <laughs> Um, we saved some lives today. <laughs> <Our own. laughs> we, we've we've settled some scores for sure. Um, is there any other competitions people want to bring to the table here, or are we ending it on the loyal men rap battle for the ages? Because we, mean, it's almost a shame Elaine didn't come up because, but <laughs> maybe it, maybe it's for the best. <laughs> well, we can. I'm not sure. Like we can do another one, but I don't know. If we want to force Elaine in, but yeah. we can force Elaine in if you want to discuss her. Elaine. But I, I warn you, I can't hold Laura back on her opinions on Elaine. <laughs> All right. Well, Dylan, why don't you generate a competition and then I'll generate one competitor to go up against Elaine in the competition? All right. Here we go. Just so Beep, we can boop. bring Elaine into Because, you know, I am, in my personality quiz, Beep. I identified as I came up with Elaine. So I feel a personal. The first time you got pairing. Oh, yeah. And but then we on, did it on the, on the show. On the air. FTF canon is I am a um, Elaine, I believe with, was it a Matt Rising or a Rand Rising? Who's going to? Frank, and then you, I can't remember, but I don't think you were high on Matt. I he think was shocked top- that you wanted to redo the test I, after you got Perrin. I know. Well, you know, Dylan like kept talking me into choices on the quiz on the air that I would have never uh, I done. I see. I think he, Dylan like, was like, "Oh he, no, you're definitely more of an Elaine." Yeah, I, he definitely <laughs> manipulated the like results him. for sure. When I took it on I my own, that. you know, just introspectively looking <laughs> in, answering honestly, it was a very strong <laughs> Perrin. But then with Dylan over my shoulder, being like, "No, you're not like that. Choose this." Yeah, that um, sounds right. That would have been a good way to introduce everyone at the beginning of the show was to do our character results, just so people know. I mean, Laura and I both got a queen. We were were both both a queen. queen. Oh, okay. (laughs) Wow. And we didn't, you didn't vote for her in the end, too. Well, actually, Laura, you did, right? You voted for her. I did. So there you go. I had to hold on to the girl. (laughs) Yeah. And then Dylan, uh, we all know, is a Matt. So we got two Egwene's and Elaine and a Matt in the mix. (laughs) So what's the competition, Dylan? What is it? The competition is in ownership. Oh, that's a good one. So we have Elaine running an inn. And as we know, inns, yeah. big part of Wheel of Time. There's just a huge market. Yes. It's a booming market for inns. And the Wheel of Time crew decides they're going to get in on the game. And Elaine has opened up her inn. And then who is mm. going to open up against her? I have Fael. Fael? <laughs> You're going to have to choose a lane. <laughs> Excuse me while I step out of the room. <laughs> the generator giveth. You know, sometimes the generator taketh away, but today it giveth. Yes, today it giveth. <laughs> so, because I cannot oh give anything to Fayil. <laughs> I will say <laughs> Wow, well, Laura's biased opinion is waiting. Um, Hannah... Uh, your reaction to to Laura's uh, 
pretty immediate vote here. I mean, usually we like to deliberate a little bit, consider all angles. Um, I mean, I've known Laura for years and this tracks with her personality. (laughs) (laughs) But I would argue that wouldn't Fayel just burn Elaine's in down? Like knowing Fayel, she destroy the competition. Mm. She would just burn it down and be like, "Now I win. It's it's mine now." <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, she's tolerable to her friends. You know, I don't think she'd be that mean. <laughs> but Elaine has a lot of political intrigue, though, and she would delegate. She's well got time. Yeah. She's well connected. She's, she's got funding. You know, that goes a long way. But yeah. so is Fayel. I mean, Fayel's all the Fayel's workers would quit. <laughs> That's right. the, she'd be one Their of those jobs. she'd be on like you know instead of kitchen nightmares it would be in nightmares yeah. and Vail would be like I don't know yeah. why yeah. it's failing and then the meanwhile there's the behind the scenes footage of her just screaming at every single poor hostess yes. and, and right. the barkeeper and everything <laughs> Also, people would have to deal with her and Perrin having fights in their room every night. Like, it wouldn't oh, be a yeah. pleasant place yeah, to no be. Yeah, no one would be able to sleep. You know, Can you would... imagine, like, trying to ask her, like, um, I didn't get enough towels in my room? <laughs> <laughs> like, you wool-headed lummox, we brought you towels yesterday. <laughs> She's like, you get two towels in every room and no more. That's like, you don't need more towels than that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and my Elaine gosh. Would just convince you you didn't need the towels in the first place like she would be like oh yeah. you know but if you think about fine. it yeah yeah I think she'd also just be down to give the towels right like <laughs> Elaine doesn't get caught up on that kind of stuff so I, I think this is something she'd be particularly good at she's kind knows how to compromise knows how to delegate yeah, yeah. you know she's got backing from the crown of course her own mother yes so she could bring all kinds of delegates there. And if they need to do renovations, it's not like she can't afford to to redo a room or something like that. Whereas Fahil's kind of estranged from her family. I don't know. Then she's not exactly winning people over with her people skills. So, yeah. No. I mean, what would they call their inns, too? They they, they got to come up with good names. I, I, I kind of just feel like Fahil's would be like Mama Fufu's Inn and Tavern. <laughs> 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 I feel like she would name it something really strange, like the Falcon and the Wolf, because of mm. her and Perrin. Yeah, or the right. Bearded Wolf. <laughs> the Bearded Wolf. That's nice I think beard. <laughs> Lane would just call it the Crown Inn. Like I think she's very straightforward, oh, and she's yeah. like, "People will stay at the Crown Inn. Yeah, yeah we're done. Right. Don't that's overthink a good, it. That's a good name yeah. too. Yeah, know? and with good reason too. I like that. I'd stay there if I had to choose between uh, the Crown Inn and. Mama Fufu's in a tavern. I'd probably go to uh, <laughs> the the Crown Inn for sure. I mean, anyone would if they wanted to make it to yeah. the night. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you go because you're someone that just loves to watch like train wrecks happening in front yeah, of your eyes. Chaos, you know, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, or if you're parent, keeping I guess. up with the in- <laughs> keeping up with the Abaras is like <laughs> yeah. a reality TV show. Oh yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so I, okay, you know what? I vote for Elaine. I feel like we're all kind of leaning that way. Are there, is yeah. anyone voting for Fayil on this one? I mean, if she's burning Elaine's in down and therefore she wins, yes, but Elaine okay. would run an in better. So um, yeah. if, if Arson's on the table, Fayil stands a good shot. Uh, if left to just the merits of their in ownership abilities, it is a Gwen all the way. And I agree. I agree. Elaine. Elaine, I'm sorry. I get them. I, it's not a it's not a wheel of time episode on the FDF podcast if Charles does not mistake Elaine for Gwen or vice versa. So I feel like he just snuck that one in at the end just to be well. like, oh, I almost forgot to do that. <laughs> well, we Elaine hasn't had the opportunity to come up yet, but I'm glad we we managed to shoe her in. Elaine, oh, right? never mind. <laughs> never Aha, mind. I did it. <laughs> there we go. So we got a Gwen and Elaine representation on the show, which is fantastic. We have our pod representation on the show, which is even better. Mm. Wow, I, I think we've done it all, guys. I mean, there's so much opportunity for more, which we'll just have to get to at a later date because. Um, I, I feel like we've already caused enough controversy. We can't controversy. give people too much. Exactly. There's a lot to process and digest right now. Like a lot of accusations have been thrown around. A lot of lifelong friendships tested, but it's Dylan all. And I need time to reconcile. Yeah, you know, I think Dylan and I need a little break as well for like a week or something. Yeah, you know, just to 
just to process what happened here today. But I think it was all for the greater good. Uh, you know, we brought things into the Wheel of Time fandom that we never thought would have been a thing until today. And that's all because of your wonderful contributions, both to mm. the generator and to the speculations here. It was uh, a whole lot of fun having you guys on, Laura and Hannah. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. We loved this discussion. It's brought us (laughs) new insight into Wheel of Time characters. Doesn't it, though? It it really helps you reappreciate the (laughs) whole series, right? Yeah, you'll learn a lot. And You You learn a lot lot about Wheel of Time. And you also learn a lot about yourself. Yes, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) This has been a journey. You know, in a way, this is a. In a way, this is as much a Wheel of Time personality quiz (laughs) as the actual Wheel of Time personality quiz. I know. Maybe more so. What I thought I, my feelings were unloyal have been like shaken to their core. (laughs) Charles, do you you identify as a loyal? I I don't know. Like I thought I liked loyal, and then Dylan's like telling me that I'm eviscerating him, which is true. So I've got a lot to think about on my own. So um, we'll have to make yeah. statements later after we've taken some time to process it. But oh, I expect a public apology to loyal on Twitter. That's you, not happening. Charles. <laughs> loyal lovers over on Twitter. <laughs> yes. I, I want to see. I want to see Lan and Moraine on Twitter. That's what I want to see. Yeah, someone would go make. I'm sure those accounts exist. There's all yeah. these ca- in character accounts that people do on Twitter time. So. There's one for Matt's horse, <laughs> so there has to be a Marie. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean we could have even checked that which one of those has more followers. But oh yeah, you know, actually either some, way, actually do research. Is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, I, I want to add my gratitude here. Thanks so much for coming on. This has been a really awesome time and it's great Chen Wheel of Time with you too. Having a great time listening to you on, your, on our pod. And uh, I was going to say your pod. And that's how. <laughs> <laughs> it's YWWR pod. So <laughs> your pod. No, I, I'm having an awesome time listening and it's so cool to have you on and Chen Wheel of Time. And yeah, uh, I'm glad we all learned a lot about Wheel of Time and ourselves here (laughs) this has been great so we appreciate you guys taking the time to sit down with us but can't wait to have you guys on our show sometime for our loyal episode oh yeah you know we we've been putting we're putting something in the books you know we're gonna have way more collaborations in the future because it's like we said we've been fans for so long and guys if you listen to our show and you haven't tried our pod i mean like why it there's there's too much overlap going Go on now. for you not to check them out. Go now, like download yeah. some episodes. They, they're super funny, and then they're also more on top of reading through Wheel of Time than us. So we've fallen yes. way behind, and they have kept on a very diligent schedule. So I mean, if they are two Egwene, so you <laughs> that yes, determination. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, do you need more of a pitch than that? It's two Egwene's. Uh, personalities together on a show like what more do you need you, just, you have us like in a lane and a mat trying to work it out it's just <laughs> i just want to dance all the time yeah, i know i know it's, it's chaos. it is a shame that <laughs> i'm all the way out in colorado and charles is in uh, georgia for, for exactly that reason but... yeah yeah i know i know <laughs> the but... dancing world is <laughs> yeah uh, uh, someday a lot of opportunities but yes, guys, check out our pod at our pod O W W R pod on Twitter and then download their episodes wherever podcasts can be downloaded. Go ahead and do that. You will not yes. be. And then, of course, please direct all of your controversies from any of these contests over to their Twitter account as well. <laughs> um, if you disagree Charles with any of these. Charles' personal account as well. <laughs> <laughs> at charles underscore mc is where to direct all of your anger and frustration so oh god <laughs> and send nice things to our pod's account and to the update podcast one you foiled my plans dylan foiled them but mm. you know what it's as long as you guys are going over to their stuff that's all that matters so uh laura hannah thank you so much for coming on and tolerating us and being good sports as we do all these 
shenanigans. We hope you had a good time. And thank you, listeners, for making it all the way to the end of the episode. You guys are truly mm. fantastic. And Dylan, thank you, as always, for being a contributing member to the Friends Talking Fantasy Podcast. You've been bringing up stuff about Loyal I never thought I knew. We're, we're saluting each other for some reason through the Zoom. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Which this is an audio format. We could have, we've never done that before in our lives. We could have gotten away. We could have gotten away with that and no one would have known except Laura and Hannah. But now you've, now everyone was knows. So. What's going on. We I don't actually know, we don't did wonder. Salute. Okay. Because I did question do they usually salute each other? We do not. Yeah. Yeah. We, never we before. just kind of just ended and, and it go just off happened. Our lives. <laughs> it just kind of happened. He was saying nice things. He doesn't usually like end with like Dylan. You are well. I said nice things you... about everyone else, and I didn't want to leave you out. So, <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. I that's was like, what do I, I do with my hand? Yeah, that's how I accept compliments too. I salute the person. Salute. So. <laughs> oh man, we have more in common than we initially thought. Which is fantastic. <laughs> Oh, well, guys, we, we could keep you on all day with this spiraling goodbye cycle that never ends, but I'm going to go ahead and pull the plug on it. Our pod, check them out. Thank you all for listening. And as always, guys, go forth and conquer, friends. <laughs>